especially uh, you're looking at on page six, page six, uh, 13 blessings that we say every morning when we wake up. And remember, we said, we said first, Modani, we thank God when we wake up, first thing. And then we thank God for our body, Ashi Yatzar, thank God for our soul, Elakaim Neshama. And now we come to the 13 blessings, which in the olden days, they used to say these blessings as everything in the morning unfolded. So as you wake up and you get out of bed, they would say, Brachot, today the custom is to say these 13 blessings after we get dressed and we wash our hands and we say, we wash Negovasa, only afterwards do we say the brachot. Some people even say it in the shul. They say all these blessings. But in the olden days, as brought down the Talmud, they would say it as, the, as it happened. So what's the first thing that happens when a person wakes up? It's the first of the 13 blessings. It's, Blessed are you, Lord our God, Baruch HaTah HaDashem, Elokeinu Melech HaLom, HaNoisen Lasech Vivino, He who gives the rooster understanding, to distinguish between day and night. So the first thing you run into life is a rooster. Why a rooster? Why is that the first thing that happens in life? The rooster in the olden days was the alarm clock. That's what the rooster was, right? So the first thing you saw you bumped into was the rooster. Everybody hates the alarm clock. It's a known thing. That you're the first thing you do in the morning, most people when they do the first thing, they give the alarm clock a zets over the head, like the alarm clock did something wrong for waking us up. So we get, we're angry, oh, another day, you know. Usually people will give a bang the alarm clock and say some obscenity. We're not going to even go there. What people say in the morning, first thing comes out of the mouth instead of moidani, they hit the alarm clock. But the alarm clock has an important role. What's the alarm clock's role? Today you might have an alarm clock, you might have it on your watch, you might have it on your on your on your phone, right? Especially if you have to wake up in the middle of the night to go on an early plane, you 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 have that alarm clock set, right? Why is that so significant and important? So when the, the alarm clock goes off, we have to thank God. What are we thanking God? We say, incredible Hashem, a rooster. <laughs> the old fashioned, wow, the rooster is so clever. He knows right away when it turns day, the rooster, when, when right away, when it turns morning, it, it, it right away starts to crow. A little light starts to crow. So it knows Hashem gave it the wisdom to know the difference between day and night. So we thank God for the rooster. If the rooster was very sick, he'd wake up in the middle of the night and start crowing, and then you were really angry at him. But usually the rooster would wake up at the right time Wake us up, and now we're ready to serve God. So we thank God for the rooster. We thank, what's the bracha? Thank God for giving the rooster the wisdom to know the difference between night and day, between dark and light. But we still have to ask us, why is the rooster such a big, play such a big role over in the morning blessings? When the first blessings we bless Hashem is for the rooster, for waking us up, for the alarm clock, which we hate. And the answer is, there's a very deep meaning which is brought down in some of the holy books that the Jewish people are compared to the rooster. Ah, Jewish people are compared to, why are we compared to a rooster? So it's brought down, the Jewish people, because we are like the alarm clock for the world. We are like the alarm clock for the rest of the world. We are the ones that, that crow when we see something wrong. That's the job of the Jewish people. We are a light unto the nations. So we know the difference between light and darkness, between day and night. That's who the Jews are. And like the alarm clock that everybody, like the alarm clock that everyone hates, like the rooster in the olden days, they used to chop the rooster and throw it away, right? The same way the Jewish people, there are a lot of people that don't like us. Why don't they like us? Our presence like bothers them. What is about that? Because the Jews are the, the conscience of the world. We're the rooster of the world. And they used to call they used to call it uh, the Jews the the minus canary. You know the canary that used to go down in the minus shaft to, to see if there were any noxious fumes. The miners used to throw a canary in. 
to see if 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 there's if there's um, if the canary is very sensitive to smells to see if there's anything noxious or dangerous for the miners to go down. And if something would happen, it would happen to the canary first, and that way they would know if the canary didn't come out, it was big trouble. You don't go down there, danger. So the canary is ahead of everybody else because they're very sensitive. And that's what the Jews are. The Jews are the minus canary. The canary in the minus shaft. Many people say that's that the Jews are like, well, that's we are very sensitive to these things. In the olden days, they didn't call us the, the canary, they called us the rooster. A rooster also is very sensitive to light and to dark. It right away wakes up when it sees a little bit light, right away starts to crow. So the rooster is, the, is, a, is a creature that knows the difference between light and day, and that's the Jewish people. So right away in the morning, we're ready, we already wake up with our mission. We hear the rooster. We say, wow, Hashem, the rooster that everybody hates. <laughs> everybody wants to clap over the head. The rooster pays an important role. So the Jews are, are inspired when they wake up already to be like the rooster, to separate between day and night. This is, a, this is a one little bracha, but it's a big thing. In fact, the, uh, the word for, for, uh, for rooster that's used over here, it doesn't say tarnagol. The usual word in Hebrew for a rooster is a tarnagol. Why does he use the word sechvi? It says, Hanoisen la sechvi vina, he who gives the rooster wisdom, understanding to distinguish between day and night. The Hebrew word usually that's used for a rooster is not sechvi. Sechvi is some ancient word that I don't think it's really used that much. The word usually that's used is a tarnagol, is a male, and a tarnagolet is a chicken. Why doesn't it say tarnagol? It says brought down that the word sechvi can also mean heart. A heart, like the heart that you have you know, inside, inside yourself, right? So this, that word for rooster also means heart. So really, this blessing can be interpreted in two ways. One is the rooster, and the other is the heart. So you think about it, it says Hashem gave the, the human heart the ability to distinguish between day and night. So that's also a reminder when we wake up in the morning about our free choice in life and about how we have to every day make decisions with our heart to decipher between good and bad. It's almost very similar to the 13 blessings which are in the Amida. In the Amida, you have three at the beginning and three at the end, and then you have the 13 or 12 blessings in the middle. The first of the 13 blessings is a similar bracha. It's a blessing about you gave man the wisdom. And we say, we, we always in that bracha on, on, on Saturday night, we, we insert the bracha it's to separate. So as Jews, we have a job always to try to figure out, to make choices in life and to discern between good and evil. And that's a similar bracha to the first bracha of the, in the Amida. The first bracha that we say in the weekday Amida is Baruch Atah, the Shem, blessed are you, Chonein Hadas, God gave us wisdom. And here we mention the heart. Wisdom, the heart, it's all, it's all connected. It's the same idea. It's the ability to, to know when something is good and when it's bad. It says that when the Mashiach is going to come, the Mashiach is going to be able to, it says, God's going to give him a smell. He'll be able to smell v'harichai. The Mashiach will be able to smell when something is good or no good, you know. It's almost like a, like a sixth sense, which we need in life a lot, you know. A lot of, there's certain people that are good at that. They pick up, you know. A lot of husbands like to go to their wives and ask them about a business deal. I'm getting involved with this guy. Should I go into this business deal? Because the, the, the wife sometimes can pick up something that the husband can't, whether 
this person that they're going in business with, whether this person is, is honest, Erlach, as they say in Yiddish, or not. And that can make the whole difference of whether business was to succeed or not. So you ask your wife, tell me about my partner. Come meet my partner. Smell whether he's honest, whether he's moral, whether he's ethical. Right? So that's a great ability to be able to, as I say, you the shmekois to to smell to to be able to the reyach the reyach varichay. This is what it says about the Mashiach that he's going to his justice will come through smelling. Now today, judges can't base that's subjective justice, right? So a judge is not allowed to go based on, on his gut, instinctive feelings, right? He's supposed to base a case on the facts, facts on the ground, the real facts, and listen carefully to the facts and make a decision based on that. But sometimes he's fooled. Right? It doesn't mean just because he had all the facts before him and he makes a decision that that, that is the truth. The truth is the truth. Sometimes he can make a mistake based on the facts. But it says the Mashiach is going to have a, an ability to, like a prophecy almost, you know, to be able to smell out. And this is what we talk about, the rooster, the rooster uh, situation. Every morning we, we see the rooster, we say, God, wow. The rooster, we sleep through in the morning. We sleep through when it gets light outside. Because we don't really, we're not, you know. Our melatonin is not so perfect. Our, <laughs> our, our, our ability to, to know, you know, to know when, you know, Hashem made it, that humans also have a, this kind of thing that we wake up when it turns light outside. But sometimes we put uh, blinds on the window so we don't know if it's light outside, right? Or sometimes we just sleep in because we're tired, good and tired. So no matter how much our body is with the rooster, sensitive. Sensitive to the difference between good and bad and, and night and day. So the bracha we uh, make in the morning is, blessed are you God for giving the first, because that's the first thing we hear, is the rooster. You know, Jews used to always walk around with roosters in their pocket when they traveled. That was they always had in their suitcase a rooster. Famous story with Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva was 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 traveling to a city, and it says he had three things he traveled with. He traveled with a candle to make light. It's called like, like a flashlight or something, right? Equivalent today. He traveled with a donkey. That was his uh, his car, his his, his uh, transportation, and he always traveled with a rooster. Because he always wanted to wake up to Davin at the right time. So he always he can't, he used to go with a rooster. So it says that one time Rabbi Akiva was traveling and he wanted to enter the city. In the olden days, they had gates around the city, right? You came a little late. It was closed. He had to wait till the next morning. So he had no choice but to sleep outside the gates of the city. And he was sitting over there outside the gates of the city. It was already at night. And a, a big wind came and blew out his candle. So he said, no, whatever Hashem does is for the good. Right? Everything God does is for the good. And then he gives a look. His donkey dies. Donkey, that's that's like your car breaks down, right? It's like your your Mercedes, whatever. Your, uh, nobody drives a Mercedes, but whatever. Your Toyota, your uh, Lamborghini, uh, just croaked. He's really upset, but he said, "You know what? Everything Hashem does is for the good." And then Mitamol he gives a look. Give me one second here.
And Tamali gives a look and he sees that his rooster died. Man, everything he has is going bad. His candle goes out, his donkey dies, his rooster dies. But you know, Rabbi Kiva, believing man, says everything Hashem does for the good. That see, but he was trapped, stuck outside the city gates without anything. That night, some terrible robbers and murderers came to attack the city. And they broke into the gates of the city. They came in and they pillaged and they murdered. It's a terrible tragedy in the city. But Rabbi Kiva survived. They didn't spot him sleeping outside the gates of the city. Because if his candle was on, they would have spotted him. If his rooster was there, he might have crowed. If his donkey was there, he might have... What does a donkey do? It says, hee-haw. Yeah. So, none of them were around to give away his, his hideout. And so Rabbi Kiva was spirit. The next morning, he understood what Hashem said, that everything that God does even if it looks to be not so good, it's for the good. So there we see that he traveled with a, with a donkey, so he could, with a donkey and the rooster. Why a rooster? Rooster to wake him up in the morning. Not just to wake him up in the morning, he wants to be able to say the bracha, you know, the bracha about the rooster. Blessed are you, God, who granted the, the, the rooster the wisdom. So every morning we make that bracha that was already established in the time of Rabbi Akiva. These brachas were, were more than likely established it, about uh, 2,500 years ago, these blessings. And we're talking about the time between the first and second temple. It's around 586 BCE, uh, yeah, somewhere around there. I have no idea what a BCE is, but it's before the common era. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really old. The bless, these blessings are like 2,500 years old, more. Yeah, not 2,500. So Rabbi Kiva wanted to have this, 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 uh, this rooster with him. But here we see the importance of, of recognizing, uh, first of all, waking up on time every morning. That's also an important thing. Thanking Hashem for the tools that wake us up in the morning. That's the bracha. But even more important is recognizing the mission of the Jewish people of being the rooster of the nations of the world, being the, the canary, being the rooster, that our job is to decipher and to smell the difference between good and bad. And as we know, the, the, the Jews, one of the, their biggest roles throughout history, and even in our days today, is the Jews are the ones always on the forefront of, 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 of being what they call the... Uh, the ethical leaders of the world are always calling out when things are being conducted immorally or unethically or irresponsibly. As Jews, we know how important that is because if you let these monsters grow and you don't call them out for what they are, who knows what could happen. As Jews, we know we, we ourselves were victims of those, the, those kind of uh, small atrocities that grew to big atrocities that eventually hurt the Jewish people very badly. So this is who we are. Our job is to be our rooster. So if I give a geshrei, to scream out. And they have it in, 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 in the news. They have about the people that, that, that call things for what they are. Always trying to find out who was the one who alerted the world. That's our job. Our job is to be the alert, the alarm, the rooster, and to wake up the rest of the world in these in these difficult and challenging days. So that is uh, the first bracha that we looked at. So let's maybe look a little bit, continue, and we'll move on to the second blessing of the morning. Thirteen blessings that we say every morning. So the first thing we said was when we uh, 
when we wake up, we thank Hashem for the for giving the rooster the ability to to, to distinguish between day and night. The second bracha we have is, "Blessed are you, God, King of the Universe, who opens the eyes of the blind." So that they used to say when they open their eyes, see they have vision. Person wakes up in the morning. And he opens his eyes. Uh, it's incredible. Just on a simple level, we thank Hashem for being able to see. There are many people, unfortunately, you can't see. I believe they still, they still say this bracha because there is a, there's different, there's metaphorical vision too. So it's not just about being able to see physically, but it's also there's also seeing things for what they are. Seeing from the eyes of the mind. But on a simple level, the eye is, is a, an amazing, amazing tool. And, and the marvel, you know. I mean, you see, I have some glasses, corrective lenses, but, but the eye is, 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 is such a, a complicated piece of uh, machinery. And, uh, you know, most machinery, the like glass, you buy something from the store. A machine, it lasts you five years, 10 years. A car, how long does a car last you? 20 years, maybe. Tops, 30 years. It's a car, right? It's a piece of metal. This is a piece of, of that it lasts so many years, 100 years, 120 years, people can see with their eyes. Same piece of machinery. That is, is we're thankful. So when, when the second thing that happens, if you wake up, you hear the rooster, the alarm clock, what do you do? You open your eyes. So in the old days, right away, they said, Baruch atah, the Shem, the Kev, the Pokech Ibrim. He who gives, gives, uh, gives vision, gives sight to the blind. Because at night, our eyes are closed, we're blind. So we open our eyes. We have to say, uh, you know, it's uh, thankful. To, to, to God in heaven for giving us the ability to, to see things. So we ask, what about people people that can't see? What are they supposed to say? Is that explained? It's not only the physical vision, but also is there is a okay, even means not just uh, physically seeing, but to, to see things for what they are. To be able to, to have a vision. You know, we talk about uh, being a, a visionary. It's incredible. People have the ability to be visionary, to see things that, that sometimes it's things that you see right over there, but then there's the ability to, to have a, a vision in life. This is also very important. It's really incredible these days. Let's say we're, we're now in the days of AI. Artificial intelligence, stuff like that, right? All kinds of inventions in this world. Every day as you wake up, there are new inventions. But every one of these inventions, years ago, there was somebody who imagined all these things. It almost appears that everything that was ever written in science fiction from years ago actually is coming true. Visionaries, people who are able to see possibilities in this world. Years ago, they thought it was it was like crazy stuff, right? But but years later, you know, when people first thought about like a, a cell phone years ago, they used to speak about one day people are going to speak on a on a phone that you can walk or go around with, or one day people are going to be able to see each other on a on a television. You know, people thought it was like, but everything that happens in this world starts out with a vision with a dream, with an idea. Every dream, eventually at some time in, 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 the, in the flow of time, comes out and becomes a reality. So Hashem gives us the ability to have vision, to imagine things, imagination. Imagination, you know, like in, like in Disney World, they, 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 they talk, speak about imagination. Great, great power that Hashem gave us imagination, which is which is part of vision, which is creativity. The human being has an amazing creativity. 
that we have. We come up with these amazing ideas that Hashem gave us the ability to come up with it. Where's ideas come from? It comes from Hashem, ultimately. But Hashem gave us, in our mind, He gave us the vision, He gave us the ability to think of things even that we don't see in front of us, but we can see what it's going to be like in the future. So this is this is the second bracha. The second bracha is thanking Hashem. And we say that even a person who can't physically see, they have a different kind of vision. I know there was once a, a bar mitzvah teacher who was blind. And he taught all the kids the bar mitzvah in a place in Cape Town in South Africa. His name was Cantor Immerman. A lot of people learned by him. And he knew all the parshas by heart. And he used to teach the kids the bar mitzvahs. And if ever in the shul someone got up and read the wrong section, he knew it from his memory before anybody else. He was the one that said, oh, hold on, it's the wrong. Because he knew it all by heart. He was able to see it in, in, the, in his mind. It's a blind, a blind cantor. You know, the Talmud, when it speaks about the blind rabbis, he used to call him Sagi Nohar. Master of great light. That's what they used to call the blind person, master of great light. So some people thought it was just like sort of to like, you know, to make them feel good to say they have a lot of light. But the truth of the matter is the Kabbalah explains that when one part of the body is not functioning well, the other parts of the body are given an extra ability to be able to compensate for that. So people like the Helen Kellers of this world who never had many different physical faculties working, other faculties were much greater and much stronger. They take over for it. So master of the great light is not trying to, to make them feel good and tell them well, they have a lot of light. But it means that they actually they had they have something about them that's greater than everybody else. Hashem compensates for the things that were missing with the master of the great light. So this bracha, Hashem gives us this vision, we wake up, you open our eyes, blessing applies to both those who have physical vision and those that don't have physical vision, those that are visionaries and those that, that have are the masters of the great light. So Hashem should bless us all, should thank God in everything that we do. To become roosters, wake up the world, and also great visionaries, which is the second bracha, which gives us the ability to look forward and imagine and, and come up with new ideas for the future generations. And through that, we merit the coming of the kingdom. Amen. Thank you all. Anybody have any questions on these uh, brachas that we just spoke about? Comments? Greetings? You're welcome to unmute yourself. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Good thank Shabbos, you. everybody. Shabbos, good Shabbos. Have a good Shabbos. Thank you. Shabbat shalom. Thank you very much. All the best, everybody. Lots of blessings Shabbos. to everyone. Shabbos, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen.